Hello everyone, this is Don Ferguson with the Appalachian Search and Rescue Conference and, I, and I'm here with, an, with another video tutorial on using Integrated Geospatial Tools for Search and, Re Search and Rescue or IGT for SAR. In today's video I want to focus on the statistical search area and this is really our first look at one of several lost person behavior modeling tools that are built into IGT for SAR. Now when I say lost person behavior Basically what I'm talking about is utilizing historical data from past search events to help guide us on where to look for a current lost or missing subject. Now even though each search is unique and each subject is unique, what we've found over time is that different types of, of individuals uh, that can be profiled into the different types of activities that they're participating in exhibit similar behaviors. So if we can understand those behaviors, we can better prioritize our search areas, thus using, making better use of our resources or our available resources and ultimately reducing the time it takes to find the lost person. Now these lost person behavior models are basically statistical analyses of, um, of these historical events. And in order to and in order to have accurate statistics, or at least valid statistics, uh, we need to have large data sets. One such data set is the International Search and Rescue Incident Database. And results from that database have been published in a text by Robert Kester entitled Lost Person Behavior. And in this text, the author looks at the influence of the environment, of ecoregion, and subject profile on lost person behavior. With regards to subject profile, we're referring to the types of activities the subject was participating in prior to becoming lost, such as a hiker, a hunter, or a Nordic skier. So within this text, um, the author has is, 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 is conducted a variety of different statistics providing several different models, but in today's video, we're going to focus on the statistical search area, or the ring model. The ring model is basically, uh, it was basically developed by looking at the Euclidean distances or the straight line distances between the initial planning point and the find location. Yeah, we, we oftentimes, we rarely in fact, uh, know the exact path that the subject took in order to get between the two points. So the best we can really do is, is measure the distance, uh, again, between the and, IPP or initial planning point, which is often the last known point or the point last seen, and and the find location, and we can take the results from uh, from those ranked data sets uh, and arrange them into quartals. Or looking at 25% of the incidents were found within this distance, 50% were found within this distance, and 75 in this distance. And then the author also threw in uh, where. Uh, where 95% of, of the data fell as well. The, and you can see that, the, that uh, within the text, uh, each of the different subject profiles or subject categories are arranged uh, in various different tables. And the statistical search area or ring model is, is arranged in a table that considers the influence of ecoregion and environment. Um, and also listed here are, are, are the number of uh, samples for each data set. So these ring models are a useful tool, again, in helping us prioritize our search area, or at least initially grabbing our, wrapping our hands around how big our search areas could potentially be. So with, within IGT for SAR, I wanted to develop an easy way for a user to quickly create these concentric rings uh, in order to do just that, in order to get a better handle on the size of their search area. So let me go ahead and switch over to ArcGIS and we'll see how I've integrated or implemented these ring models in IGT for SAR. So in some of the past videos, uh, I've showed you how to create new incidents um, and, uh, and begin an incident and even create a few quick tasks. Um, in order to create the ring models, I'm actually going to step back a little bit. I'm assuming that we've already created a new incident, uh, but I will go through the process of loading up incident data and subject information uh, and it, prior to uh, generating the ring models. So the first thing that we want to do for any incident is, uh, is enter some information about the, this particular incident uh, and the subject. 
one of the first things we want to look at is who the lead agency is. So I'm going to edit the, the table that contains the lead agency. And in this case, my lead agency would be the West Virginia State Police. And if I know, you know who the uh, responsible authority is there, who the particular uh, trooper that I'm working with, I could enter that information as well. But for now, I'll just leave it as, uh, as, that, as, the, as the lead agency. So the next thing I want to do is uh, enter in some information about this particular incident. So I want to give an incident name. And this is, again, this Cooper's Rock is my incident name. And again, that's a, a name that I've decided on uh, for this particular incident. And then our incident numbering scheme. Uh, the incident type is, and we'll come back and fill in this lead agency. Uh, but the incident type here is a, is a search. Uh, it's a, a ground search environment. And let me back up to look at the incident type. And here, you know, there, we have multiple different uh, types of incidents to choose from, be it a search or rescue or recovery or so on. Uh, so we have a search, uh, and the type of uh, and the environment is a, a ground search as opposed to an aircraft or a search in a body of water. That's kind of cut off. You can uh, increase the size of this to better see that uh, search in a body of water. The type of eco region. This is going to be important uh, when we as part of our uh, statistical search area. So uh, here we're dealing with a temperate climate. Uh, we have a couple of different choices. So we have a temperate climate. Our population density uh, is a wilderness environment uh, that we're dealing with. And you have a couple of different ones to choose from. The reason you have, let me, let, let me stop for a moment and just explain why there's so many different data fields here. Um, one of the things that we want to try and do and want to try and encourage uh, with with using integrated or IGT for SAR uh, is that once an incident is complete, uh, there's a tool that's available that will allow you to generate a data form that you can actually submit to the International Search and Rescue Incident Database. And, and your data can then be used to help improve these lost person behavior models. So many of these data fields that are appear here are intended to, uh, to provide input data to that, uh, to that database. Uh, and other data fields are, and, and I should say, in these, some of these same data fields are used uh, for our lost person behavior modeling. So, for example, terrain. Uh, terrain is an important parameter that we'll use uh, for our lost person behavior um, ring model that we're about ready to create. So we have a mountainous terrain. Uh, our land cover here is, is moderate, maybe moderate to heavy that we're dealing with. Uh, this is Cooper's Rock State Forest, so we have a, a state um, landowner. If we know our base frequency, and in this case, we're going to use channel echo. Um, and uh, if we know a, a good base phone number that we'll use for call-ins, uh, we can do that. Establishing our map datum, uh, we're going to use WGS84, our map coordinates, and then map de magnetic declination will actually be calculated for us once we plot our, our, our planning point. So let's go ahead and close that for a moment, uh, and we'll go ahead and enter in some subject information. And oops, let me open up that table. Uh, so our first subject we have here, and we're going to give them a name of John Doe just because uh, I didn't want to think of anything else, and our subject category. And in this particular case, we'll look at a child uh, age, um, a child of age 10 to 12. We'll assume that our, our subject is a 10-year-old young boy that uh, wandered away from a campsite. He's uh, by himself, uh, and then we can fill in the date last seen uh, if we want to. So we'll go ahead and do that. And today, I believe, is the 8th of September. Time last seen our age. Actually, let me make this. Uh, and then a variety of other information we can also include in the uh, in the subject information. Uh, and and, uh, and I'm not going to fill all that out for right now, but 
I think you get the idea of what we're doing there. So now we have uh, we've we've entered in some incident information and some subject information. So now we want to update our domains uh, because some of the information will be used in other data fields, uh, and the domains allow us these dynamic domains that are part of the geo database uh, that's that is part of. IGT for SAR uh, allows to improve data integrity or to ensure data integrity and consistency for, uh, across the different uh, features and uh, and um, and tables. So let me update the domains. Uh, and then I actually want to go back just for a moment to uh, the incident information. And I'm going to update this lead agency now. Uh, whereas I didn't put anything before there. Now, if I click on it, I get the drop down box that gives me the Western State Police as the lead agency. Okay, so now that I have that, uh, I'm going to save my data. Uh, and now I'm ready to plot the initial planning point. So, again, in this particular scenario, uh, we have a missing 10 year old boy that wandered away from uh, a campsite. And this is the, uh, the campsite uh, location. So, uh, I think I'm already editing. So, what I'm going to do is create a new feature, uh, a new planning point feature. And in this case, I'm going to create a PLS planning point. So, I'm going to click on PLS and click on, or the point last seen, and click on that location where that subject was actually last seen. And when I do that, I get this uh, attribute pop-up box, and this is part of uh, uh, the uh, editing tools uh, that allow me access into the, uh, into the immediate access into the, uh, into the attributes. Um, and I'm, I have an opportunity to enter the incident name, and the subject name or the subject number, um, uh, and then the incident or the IPP type in this in this particular case, it's uh, the PLS, and that's the one that's the the feature that I chose to uh, enter there, uh, and the IPP classification. So in this case, um, uh, it was a field, uh, and then a couple of things are automatically calculated for me: uh, the UTM coordinates and the lat and long coordinates, and those are automatically calculated for me using the um, uh, attributes assistance. All right, so now I'm going to save this, and uh, I'm actually going to stop my edits. I'm going to do uh, now. I'm going to create my uh, ring model. So in creating the ring model, uh, I'll go to the SAR toolbox, and under the planning extended version, there is a tool called statistical search area. So if we double click on that, you'll get a, a bot a a box here with some uh, instruction uh, tells you a little bit about the tool but basically the information that you need to enter is the incident number so in case you have multiple incidents uh, the IPP type so we're dealing with the PLS uh, and we want to use the subject category so again our subject category in this particular case is a child age 10 to 12 so we're going to use the, the the table results from again from Kester's lost person behavior book uh, all those all those Euclidean distances, or those IPP defined distance, have been uh, programmed into IGT for SAR. So I'm going to change my, or choose to use miles as my units. Uh, again, stick with the subject category, and then I'm going to click OK to run. So these are the, the distances uh, that are part of that particular table for a, a individual that falls into a child age 10 to 12 in a mountainous terrain in a temperate eco, in a temperate eco region so it's going about creating these concentric rings that make up the the ring model and that's it so let me zoom out here and now we can see that we have our 25 50 percent 75 and if I zoom way out 95 percent ring so that's how you create the uh, statistical rings in, or the ring model in IGT for SAR. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned for some other videos that will talk about other lost person behavior models and some of the other functionality of IGT for SAR. So thanks for watching.